G'day boys! Last time in Agnos, I introduced another set of gym leader stand-ins to replace our quote-unquote evil team. The lieutenants of the Bravo Federation. And so we're gonna top it off with their generals and great leader, based off of the Greek Titans. All of these trainers, just like the lieutenants, have all managed to achieve immortality by varying means, which is why some of their design elements are inhuman. Don't worry, it's all part of the law. So buckle up and make sure you hit that subscribe button. It honestly makes a world of difference. Cheers. Hidden below the depths of Bravo Islands, under its inactive volcano, the Federation's base is situated. It is not all too common that the members return here, however. After having lived for as long as they have, they'd much rather spend their time elsewhere. This is a rare instance, however. For the lieutenants to have fallen to butt a fucking child is something unfathomable. So the generals and leader have returned to their bunker to set preparations. Oh, and also, since they've been alive for so bloody long, all these generals have already gotten married, fighting together with one unified team. And the titans they're based off of are together in the mythos as well. You, dear players, will make it to the base at Bravo Island after making your way through the tunnels of Nike. Encountering the first general, you display the badges you have plundered, a show of your power, and engage in battle. Let's start shit off with a splash, with the generals Hudson and Brooke. They are based off of the titans Oceanus and Tethys. Oceanus being the titan of the Great River, a great freshwater stream which encircled the flat disk of the earth. Yes, the earth is flat. And Tethys being the titan of fresh water. In terms of etymology, Hudson comes from the Hudson River, and Brook means, well, brook as well as stream. In their immortality, they have spent time building a home to call their own below the seas, and their bodies have even adapted to living underwater. Obviously, this home I'm referring to is based off of Atlantis. Unfortunately, despite all their efforts, they've never managed to populate the place. Normal people can't survive underwater. So in the end, all they really ended up doing was commit mass drownings. Either way, they've returned back to the surface in order to fight in this war. Though they don't really want to. I mean, Oceanus and Tethys didn't fight in the Titanomachy. But they are fucking scared shitless by their leader. And so they fight regardless. The team they used to do so consists of a Crawdaunt, Feraligator, Milotic, Dolpent, and Swampert. However, on a rematch battle, the Pokemon at their disposal are Overquill. Cramorant, Drayleg, Crabominable, Feraligator, and Cursola. Next up, we have Dante and Theodora, fire type trainers based off of Hyperion and Taya, the Titan of Heavenly Light, as well as the Titan of Sight and all that shimmers. When it comes down to names, Dante means everlasting, and when paired with the story of Dante's Inferno, you could see it as everlasting flame. And Theodora is long for Taya, which means goddess in Greek and is also strikingly similar to Taya, 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 whatever. Their team composition includes Volcarona, Emanect, Chandelure, Rapidash, and Torchair. On a rematch, Emanect, Chandelure, Ampharos, Shinotic, Volcarona, and Mydart. They are full-blown pyromaniacs. They love to watch things shimmer, shine, and fucking burn. So this whole war is a great bloody excuse to do just that. Coming at you with their psychic abilities are the next Bravo Federation general couple, Merlin and Morgana, named after the famous sorcerers of Arturian legend, Merlin, no last name given, and Morgan Le Fay, based off of Coeus, Titan of Rational Intelligence, and Phoebe, Titan of Prophetic Wisdom. Together, through their long lives, they have garnered their own psychic abilities through sheer dedication and relentless studying. Merlin is simply incredibly knowledgeable, and has achieved telekinesis, whilst Morgana, on the other hand, is a telepath and has premonition, though not as strong as the Oracle's natural-born future sight. They will face you with a Six Sphinx, Alakazam, Reuniclus, Zatu, and Plumega. Their rematch team together encompasses an Alakazam, Six Sphinx, Ninetales, Yan Mana, Mirabu, and a bit of a curveball, Pangoro, because every smart person needs a dumb friend to make them feel superior. The Titan of Fertility and Motherhood, Rhea, is who the last of the Bravo Federation's generals is inspired by. This is Eve, named after Adam and Eve because of the whole being Titan of Fertility thing. Oh, and she has a preference for fairy types. She treats her Pokemon like family, and this family is comprised of a Sylveon, Togekiss, Delphae, 
a Kid Mir and Shadonna. Her rematch team, which means just as much to her, including the Kid Mir, Kangaskhan, Marowak, Sylveon, Salazzle, and Lorantis. Eve is quite free spirited, but always carries around that bitch regal vibe, though she is very kind. Her perceptions of love and nurture have become skewed over the years, though, leaving her rather possessive. And finally, the current ruler of Agnos and leader of the Bravo Federation, Ren. Though the wider population had once known him as Professor Hawthorne instead. He is based off of the King of the Titans, the Titan of Time and the Harvest, Kronos. Both of his names refer to plants, as Kronos is a harvest ED, and also all the professors have plant names. In the past, Ren Hawthorne had once resided in Tudorstead as the Agnos region's professor before falling terminally ill. He had a student of his use his research material to find a cure, a student who would lead him to obtaining immortality. With this, he shared eternal life amongst the select few comrades, established a Bravo Federation, and reigned over Agnos as a faceless ruler. The people have assumed Hawthorne to have passed. During your battle with the professor, you discover an ability of his own that makes him a lot stronger. In harsh sunlight, his grass-type Pokemon draw all the energy of the sun, giving them an increase in speed and making fire-type attacks neutral against them. And speaking of those grass types, here they are. Cronark, Aromint, Cacturn, Cradley, Harplock, and Venusaur. But he does expand the type range on a rematch with his Cronark. Bronzong, Vendretta, Relicamp, Mamo Swine, and Cac Turn. He's a conniving little fuck who also reversed his age amongst gaining immortality. Now, he simply loves to fulfill his desires, no matter how fucked they may be. Defeating him will put an end to this war and lead the Gamma Resistance to victory. The long ass reign of the Bravo Federation has ceased, and your name will forever go down in history. And that's another video done. Thanks for watching. Ciao, fellas. Have a good one.